Welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech and my series of exam question compilation videos on key topics you might still be struggling with. This particular video covers... I've taken related questions from my past paper walkthroughs and given them to you here back to back. This series is intended for the last few weeks of your revision and my advice is to go through all the practice papers and past papers before you look at these or the compilation videos will be the mathematical equivalent of endgame spoilers for you. Having already worked through all the practice papers, these compilation videos will give you a deep dive on topics you are still finding challenging, give you more of an overview, helping you recognise command words, identify key features and strategies, building your confidence and helping you apply these techniques for future papers. If you find it helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, it will really help me out. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, why not do that now? I'll be making lots of these compilations over the next couple of weeks, and you'll get notified of these as soon as I upload them. Right, let's get into it. Write 225 as the product of its prime factors. Okay, so we're going to do some prime factor decomposition here. There are various ways to do this. I tend to use a factor tree to do that. So I start with my number that I want to break down in a circle in the top. And then I think of two numbers that multiply together to give me that number. Okay, well, it ends in a 5, so it should be divisible by 5. So let's use one of my factors as 5. 225 divided by 5 leaves me with 45. Okay, now are either of those two numbers prime? 5 is prime, so that's a stopping point, but 45 is not. I can break 45 down into 9 times 5. Now again, 5 is prime, so that one's a stopping point, but 9 isn't. I can break 9 down even further into 3 times 3. Now those two are prime numbers, so all my branches are now terminating at a prime so that means my number 225 is going to be all those terminating branches multiplied together. So 3 times 3 times 5 times 5. So 3 times 3 times 5 times 5, uh, which is going to be my answer. Now, sometimes these questions ask for it in index form, in which case you could just rewrite it as 3 squared times 5 squared, but actually it doesn't specify it here. So either answer is acceptable. Yeah. Question 9 wants us to write 280 as a product of its prime factors. Now there are different methods for doing this. I quite like the factor tree method, where you start with 280 in a circle at the top, and then you think of two numbers that multiply together to give you 280. So I'm going to pick, uh, well, let's go with 2, and 2 times what? 140 is equal to 180. Now, if your number is prime, like 2 is, that's a stop. If it is non prime, if it's a composite number, then there will be two other numbers that you can multiply together to give you 140. So how about 10 and 14. Okay, now 10 is not prime, so it splits up as well. So 10 is 2 times 5, and 14 is 2 times 7. Now 2 is prime, 5 is prime, 7 is prime. Uh, so all of my branches are now ended. Once you've completed all of them like that, then you can say that 280 is equal to a product of all those prime factors, all those prime factors multiplied together. So I've got one, two, three twos. So two times two times two. I've got a five times five, and I've got a seven times seven. Sometimes it asks you to write it as a product for prime factors in an index form, in which case you'd have to go one step more and write that as 2 cubed times 5 times 7. Here it doesn't ask that, so either answer would be acceptable. Question 8. Write 140 as a product of prime numbers in index form. 
Okay, I tend to do these with factor trees. So start with 140, and I think of two numbers that multiply together to give me 140. Uh, I'm getting 14 and 10 pop into my head. Now 14 is made up of 2 uh, times 7, both of which are prime numbers, and 10 is made up of 2 times 5, again, which are all prime numbers. So 140 then is going to be 2 times 2 times 5 times 7, which in index form is 2 squared times 5 times 7. Always a good idea just to double check your maths here. 2 squared is 4 times 5 is 20 and times 7 is 140 is required. Question 5. Write 36 as a product of its prime factors. Give your answer in index form. Now I like to do these as a factor tree. So starting off with 36 as my top number, I need to find a pair of numbers that multiply together to give me 36. Uh, 3 and 12 spring to mind, so 3 goes there, 12 goes there, 3 times 12 is 36. Now 3 is prime, so we can stop on 3, but 12 is not prime. I can think of two other numbers that multiply together to give me 12. Let's choose 4 and 3. Again, 3 is prime, so that's a stopping number but 4 isn't, I can break that down into 2 and 2, which are both primes. So looking at all of our terminating branches, multiplying those together will give us our original number. So 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 is going to be equal to 36. Always worth double checking these. 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36. Now it does actually ask us to do it in an index form here, so we just need to write that in powers rather than as a sequence of multiplication. So 2 times 2 is 2 squared, and 3 times 3 is 3 squared. So our answer is 2 squared times 3 squared. Question 21. N is a number. As a product of prime factors in index form, n is equal to 2 times 3 to the power of 4 times another number y to the power of 3. Work out 3n squared as a product of prime factors in index form. Give your answer in terms of y. Okay, so we know that n is 2 times 3 to the 4 times y to the 3. So if I want to work out 3n squared, I'm going to be taking n, I'm going to multiply it by 3, so two, 3 lots of 2 times 3 to the power of 4 times y cubed, and then I'm going to square it. Okay, now Bidmas says indices come before multiplication, so I'm going to deal with this index here first, and when I've got an index of an index like this with multiple things inside the brackets all multiplied together, I kind of have to distribute this to each of the terms in that product inside the bracket. So I'm going to square each part of it separately. So I'm going to square 2, I'm going to square 3 to the 4, and I'm going to square y cubed. So that's going to give me 3 lots of 2 squared. Well, it's going to be 2 squared, because we're going to leave it in index form, times 3 to the 4 squared. When you have an index of an index, you multiply the indices together. So that's going to give me 3 to the 8, and then times y cubed all squared. 3 times 2 is 6, so that's going to give me y to the power of 6. Okay, so now I've got 3 lots of 2 squared times 3 to the 8 times y to the 6. Now those things are all just multiplied together, so I can just combine this term with this term. I've got 3 to the 8 and I times it by another 3. I'm simply going to get 3 to the 9. So I'm going to rewrite this uh, in ascending power. So 2 squared times 3 to the 9 times y to the 6. And that is going to be my final answer. Well, I hope this video helped you get a better overview of the topic. If it did, give it a thumbs up. You can find more exam question compilations over here. For more past paper walkthroughs, click down here. 
If you want to visit my Amazon shop with my recommendations for calculators, revision guides and other maths related stuff, click down here. Good luck in your revision and in your exams and see you again next time.